Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. This is a sneak peek on an upcoming project. Uh, I picked up this Emco Turn 140 CNC lathe. Uh, it originally came from uh, Arizona State University, their metal program, and uh, it's been sitting probably for a number of years now. Uh, the plan is to upgrade the control in it. Um, there are a couple of challenges. These Emco Turns of uh, this vintage were usually uh, 380 volts um, and uh, they also had uh, DC brush spindle motors that uh, operated at up to 400 volts DC so the motors got to come off and we'll have to refit another motor to it the other thing is the turret um, I'm not sure which one it is I have an Emco turn 240 it has a duplomatic turret on it this one doesn't have a name on it I'm not sure if it's a Souter or if it's uh, something that was produced by Emco um, one of the other unusual things I think um, actually kind of handy is the spindle nose on this is a d14 cam lock um, it had a, it has a manual uh, chuck six inch three jaw chuck on it and it has a tailstock on it. It's a manual chuck, or it's a manual tailstock. Uh, we'll do a little walk around here real quickly, kind of give you an overview of the machine. Um, the control, everything was built right into the cabinet here. The, it's a five phase stepper system on the X and Z axis, and it had a monochrome display, but the drives and everything are all all built into this this cabinet here um, this will all be coming off i have st still trying to determine whether or not I keep the cabinet put everything in it or put a small cabinet somewhere else on the machine and then just have the display and a keyboard up here to operate the machine so um, with that let me go handheld and take you around and let you take a look at the machine okay here's a view of the turret it's uh, eight position. It'll hold four boring or drilling tools and four turning tools on it. It's a good sized turret. There's the uh, tail stock. It's a manual tail stock. You just crank it here. So it's a manual tail stock. A lock to lock the quill. And then it's got a bolt. Probably hard to see. It's got a bolt down there and you can move the tail stock back and forth. Again, there's the spindle nose and there's a chuck down there in the pan and there's actually a, a pneumatic draw bar here the unusual thing is and I'm not that familiar with these lathes don't know if you can see down there or not probably not but there's actually a draw bar or a, a, like a draw bolt here and uh, this is a, this is tapered and it almost made me wonder that bolt actually fit a an R8 uh, thread and this taper was almost an R8 and I actually was able to put in uh, an R8 tool holder in there and uh, it threaded in but it didn't lock all the way against this so I need to do a little bit of research to see what kind of adapter went here and then to hold the collets I kind of thought was it was going to be 5C and I was hoping it was 5C but uh, that's not the case I'll show you how this thing goes. I've taken the cover off it already. But this goes all the way in. And then you see here there's a tie bar that holds the uh, collet closer. And then the pneumatic airlines, they go right up here just like that so anyway if anybody knows anything about these the the 140 240 uh, machines this is a 140 and can tell me a little bit about the call closer that goes on this I'd be grateful this is the back of the cabinet the drives are behind it again there's the console all this stuff's going to be for sale uh, I have no use for it the monitor it's got a little bit of screen burn on it. Not terrible. Um, let's see. Let's go around the machine. There's the big DC brush servo motor. Baumuller. 
says 25, 2500 to 6500 RPM and 400 volts, 5.5 kilowatt, 15 amp. And that's the air and let for the uh, power draw bar. Here you can see the stepper motor, ball screw. It's got a big coil spring here to uh, uh, counterweight, uh, I would imagine, the turret. There's quite a load there. And then I noted there is a, it's probably a switch for homing the machine. Here's the Z-axis, you can see the same thing down here. The Z-stepper. I'm kind of thinking those are NEMA 34s, but I haven't measured them yet. They could be metric. Uh, uh, it doesn't look like it'd be that terribly a big deal if I had to make another motor mount for it. The stepper is geared down to the ball screw a little bit. I can't see that, but anyway, inside the cabinet is pretty clean, other than sitting for so long. But yeah, anyway, that's the uh, that's an upcoming project after the Klaus and Candia is done. Anyway, so yeah, I haven't been sitting on my butt. I've uh, this is another thing I've been working on this PC Turn 50. This also come from a local Votech school. Um, it runs fine, has a Fanuc Series O control on it. Um, it's ultra, ultra clean. Um, I fit a GoTech USB floppy emulator and I also put a solid state drive in the PC. I'm just waiting on some extension cables for the mouse and the keyboard. And it comes with its own desk here. Uh, a friend of mine locally turned me on to this machine. It was uh, at the auction, school auction, but it is complete and it functions completely. So I will not be retrofitting this little guy. Um, I'll be trying to sell it on just like it is. So anyway, that's about it for now, you guys. Uh, I'll get some more videos up. I've got some uh, videos of the Klaus and Candia disassembly, just pulling the control out of it, taking the motors off and so forth. I'm um, actually wait, waiting on motors and drives for it, and I've got the, the uh, panel laid out on it. Um, so anyway, we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.